Cool. All right. Next, we have Resemble AI. I'm going to be talking about why virtual beings deserve a voice. Um, who am I? I am Sohaib, uh, CEO of Resemble. We make synthetic voices that sound like you guys, uh, but they're not you guys. So you've seen all of these things today. Most of them have been visual. This is like an inspiration for us. These are tools that allow you to create faster, make things that look realistic, feel realistic, and overall make an enjoyable experience. Now, the question I want to ask you guys is, why do you guys care so much about the eyes? And why doesn't anyone care about what we hear? Even though that's about your listing pretty much all day long. So what we do is we create synthetic vo voices with just minutes of data. Um, here's how it works. So I, myself, went in, recorded a few sentences. Uh, this is what I sound like, if you can't hear me. The narrow path would have made the bravest tremble. So this is real me. And then I went in and I typed something in, in, our, in our little editor. What if I could turn myself into a virtual being and yet keep my voice? And that is synthetic me. So I never actually said those words. Now, this gets a lot more interesting when you're modeling after real characters. So animators out there and designers, they, they make characters with all sorts of expressions. Um, and then they're kind of stuck with this experience. So they can edit the visuals, but they really can't edit the audio. So this is Lucy. If you don't know Lucy, Edward will talk to you. Um, this is what Lucy sounds like in real life. They're everywhere, all the time, even at night. And when we plug that in, this is what Lucy sounds like when she's not real. Hi, my name is Lucy. Now, this is only half the stuff, right? So voices, text, it's pretty ambiguous. You can say the same thing in multiple different ways. So we can tune the emotion in the audio that's generated. So. Hi, my name is Lucy. So she can be excited. Um, now, what this means is we allow for more creativity, more efficiency, and more freedom. The worst part of my job is flying around the world, being away from my family just to record 10 minutes of audio for an ad. Anyone know who that was? Ellen. Ellen, great. See, I told you guys, voice is really important. It's a part of your identity. So Ellen never said those words. We just took Ellen's voice, and we were able to make her say this. Now, a lot of what we do is about scaling. So when, when we talk about scaling, we don't want you to go in there and pick out which, which, emotions to, which emotions apply to which text. So we can actually take a lot of text and automatically apply emotions. To Sherlock Holmes, she is always the woman. I have seldom heard him mention her under any this other name. This is all synthetic. In his eyes, she eclipses and predominates the whole of her sex. It was not that he felt any emotion akin to love for Irene Adler. He was, I take it, the most perfect reasoning and observing machine that the world has seen. So she goes on for a bit. She reads all of Sherlock Holmes. But you can understand that the, from the text, she's able to accommodate the right emotions at the right time. Um, now, obviously, um, we, we were in America. So um, and I'm Canadian, so I really don't have an accent, I think, eh? Uh, but obviously, people have accents. It's part of who we are. You know, if you go down to India, English is the second most spoken language there. And it is, it naturally has an accent. If you're British, you invented the language. Asked whether he had lied to the monarch about his reasons for the suspension, he replied, absolutely not. Anyone know who that is? Stephen Fry. Stephen Fry, that's, that's first. Not in America. <laughs> All right, so that's Stephen Fry. That's synthetic Stephen Fry. Stephen Fry never said those words. So the technology is agnostic of, of accents. Um, it's also agnostic of languages. So you can go across to, say, Italian. Come posso aiutarti oggi? La fattura è prevista entro cinque giorni. Fatemi sapere se avete domande. Now, the beauty of this is the algorithm is actually learning how someone speaks. So it's, it gets, it's very fluent. So how does this begin? So I'm going to skip over some of this stuff. Uh, do you remember, remember Stephen Hawking? He had this thing where it would sound like he's a real robot, right? That was old school. That was concatenative. So you take words together, you glue them together. And then we realized we really can't describe how humans speak. So if I asked you guys, what, how do you speak? You probably won't be able to do it. So deep learning was able to do this extremely well. So we have something called an MOS score, which is like you get a, like a bunch of people to tell you how something sounds real from 1 to 5. A real human sounds about 4.58 on that scale. And 
with autoregressive models, we were able to get to about 4.52. So it's like indistinguishable from a real human. Um, the exciting thing also is what this will allow. So um, speaker adaptation, uh, style control, language transfer, um, and even singing. So obviously, we do a lot of work in this stuff when you publish a lot of open source work. Uh, one particular thing I want to talk about is something called Resembleizer. So have you guys seen this show called Hot Ones? <coughs> Now, it's a show on YouTube. People eat hot wings. It's kind of funny. Um, now, we have something that could detect fake speech. So this, this demonstrates in real time detecting who's speaking. Bernie. So the chart shows who's speaking now. And when the speakers swap over, it'll tell you who's speaking at the moment all in real time. And this tells you similarity across different speakers. So we can very easily tell who's real and who's fake. And we do a lot of other open source work. So we have a repository called Real Time Voice Cloning. It's about 10,000 stars now. So you can, it's, it's completely open source. We also have a wave RNN, like uh, it's called a neural vocoder. Um, so we basically provide a lot of stuff in, to the community. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is um, we do a lot of stuff for, um, for, for commercial purposes, but we also focus a lot of our technology towards people who really need it. So, one of my favorite motivational speakers, unfortunately, was diagnosed with ALS. Um, and imagine like your livelihood depends on you speaking. And all of a sudden, you can't do what you're good at anymore. Um, we're sitting on technology. At the very first slide, I mentioned that every virtual being deserves a voice. We also believe that every human being also deserves a voice, a unique voice for who you are. So we work a lot with the ALS uh, chapter in New York. We also do a lot of work with dyslexia. Uh, kids who have dyslexia to make their reading or their homework more enjoyable. That is Resemble. Thanks. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much.